this is an instructional video for the new Samson Shad. Now the Samson Shad is a long casting subsurface lure. Uh, like all Samson lures it's virtually indestructible which means it's ideal for fishing over rocky terrain or fishing for fish with sharp teeth. The shad comes in a variety of weights and sizes. So basically, I'm not going to go through the sizes now because they're also open to change. We're always adjusting things. Um, but basically, you're going to have some of the lures in certain sizes with different weights. Now, the reason for that is, is the conditions that you can be fishing. So basically, if you're fishing in either windier or much rougher conditions, you'd probably want to go for a heavier version of that lure. So for example, in the 6.2 centimeter range, it's a very small little lure. We've got that at the moment in 15 grams, 20 grams, and probably very soon 25 grams, which would be ideal again, as I said, for windier conditions or when you really want to cast to a distance. So although the shad is a really simple lure to use, it's really easy to get a great action out of it. I'm just going to go through a few of the retrieval methods that you can try. I mean, obviously it's a kind of lure you want to experiment with yourself, but I'm going to go through a few of the ways that you can retrieve it and, you know, to give you a start if, you're, if you've just got this lure or to have a look if you're thinking of getting the lure. So depending on where you're standing, for most retrieves, you're going to want your rod at a basically a horizontal kind of position. If you're fishing up high, you're going to probably want that rod tip down a little bit if you want to keep the lure down in the water. And if you're fishing over very shallow ground, you'll want to lift that rod tip up to bring the lure to the surface. I like to use these lures off of ledges or over very shallow ground. So it's ideal for both situations. If you are fishing over very shallow ground, it's important when you cast the lure out as, it, as it's about to hit the water is to turn the bail arm over. So you don't want to let that lure drop too deep over the shallow areas. If you're fishing over obviously deeper ledges, you can count it down and let it drop down a little bit before you start your retrieve. The rate at which the lure sinks is depending on the weight that you've got. Some of them are going to sink a little bit slower than others. So if you've got a 6.2 centimeter shad in 15 grams, it's going to sink slower obviously than the 25 gram version, obviously because it's a lot heavier and it's got the same profile. Just remember if you're fishing over shallow grounds and you're not sure, you're, you're in doubt if you're going to snag the lure, uh, to be on the safe side, it's always best to lift that rod tip up increase the speed of the retrieve so you can splash that lure along the surface bring it over the rocks and then continue as you were there's no point in taking any risks if you're fishing over anything say like a meter or less or even two meters it's not going to make much difference at all how deep that lure is under you know if you drop it down further it's not going to increase your chances of a catch not in my opinion um, unless it's very deep water so if you're fishing over shallow ground you're far better off keeping that lure say 15 centimeters under the surface away from the rocks and away from any risk of basically losing the lure that way you're going to be able to fish over you know much tougher terrain where where basically the fish can be so i'm going to go through a few of the methods that you can use to retrieve it now so the first retrieval method i'm going to speak about is very simple it's just a steady retrieve with little taps of the rod tip. So it doesn't have to be anything too exaggerated. It's just little taps as you're retrieving it and that's gonna help that lure get a really crazy kind of walk the dog action which bass and um, other fish just really can't resist. So if you're over deeper water, let it drop down for a couple of seconds before you start that retrieve and then just little taps, steady retrieve. Just keep it moving through the water this is an ideal retrieve, say in rough conditions when you want to bring it through at a slow to medium speed and give it a really good action or over shallow grounds where you can do exactly the same keeping your rod tip up and just tapping it, bringing it near to the surface and sometimes splashing. Um, yeah, splashing it along the surface the odd time can really help. Fish love to see that lure splashing. It looks like uh, injured fish or distressed fish so um, giving it the odd 
splash on the, on the surface is only going to help. So this slow kind of retrieve is ideal, say early mornings, evenings, when you want to slow things down a little bit. Early morning I like to retrieve the lures a little bit slower than say as the morning progresses and the same with the evening. As it gets darker you can slow that retrieve down. Now a variation on that retrieve would be little taps and pauses. So it's very similar except instead of just continually winding and bringing the lure through with the little taps, you're just going to do the odd pause. Now I'm not talking about long pauses just for a second or so, just a pause and then tapping it through again, retrieving it a little bit, pause and just repeating like that. Um, I found this method can really work well, especially on fish that are a little bit shy or smaller. Uh, sometimes if it's too fast, they might shy away from it. Whereas you, you, the minute you just kind of pause it, some fish do hit it. It doesn't always work, but it can be a very effective method in the right conditions. So another really effective method is to count the lure down. It's a sinking lure. Now if there's a lot of current, it's going to sink down slower. Um, if it's really, really flat and not much current, it's obviously going to sink down a little bit quicker. So I would count it down. You, you need to know the depth of the water. You don't want to leave it too long and get snagged, obviously. But you can work through the different uh, depths of water column that way and then you can start your retrieve. Another really effective method I like to use is kind of hard pulls to the rod tip or, or kind of ripping it through. This is a kind of a little bit more of an aggressive style of retrieve but it can work really well on its days. So on a day say when a, a slow retrieve isn't working, a faster more aggressive retrieve might be just what you need and vice versa. So basically you're going to be retrieving it through quite slow, sort of winding up the slack and then you're going to do a harder pull to the rod tip and then wind up the slack and then another harder pull to the rod tip and winding up the, the slack and you just keep repeating this and it's going to give it that really fast fleeing injured bait fish look which some fish just can't resist. Now this is especially effective I would say in more open water when you want to sort of provoke that uh, fish to follow or hit the lure. I actually also use this method over fairly shallow ground. Um, the only difference being I would keep the rod tip up more. So I would be retrieving and then give it a pull either up with the rod tip up or a little bit to the side and just keeping that lure basically just under the surface and really kind of vibrating through. When you use this method you can really feel the lure vibrate through the water which is great because that's going to send out again those distress signals to any fish around. So you kind of going to let it drop a little bit after and you're going to pull again and it's going to vibrate and it's got a nice walk the dog action. It's going to sort of slalom through and then you just keep repeating that and that's another very effective method for this lure. So basically there's so many ways you can retrieve this lure. You just need to experiment yourself. You can just vary the different speeds you're going to use. So you can do all of these methods at various retrieval speeds. You can just test them out on the day or uh, depending on what fish you're targeting. You know some fish say like pike might prefer a slower kind of retrieve or it might be the time of day. Again you might want to have a slower retrieve and in the middle of the day you might be looking for something faster sort of um, ripping it through with harder pulls of the rod tip to try to provoke that hit. Just by varying the speed of the retrieve, the amount of taps, um, you can get a variation of retrieves and uh, just play around with it and find what, what works best for you and what works best in the conditions. If I'm fishing in pretty rough conditions and there's you know quite a lot of water, white water around and current I tend to feel the tension in the line and that let that sort of dictate the speed I'm going to retrieve so if you feel there's a lot of current in the line there's no point in just keep winding it through that current just let it work through the current and just use little taps just keep tapping it and just let it work in the current and then all of a sudden you'll feel the current ease off and you might be able to retrieve a little bit quicker but you don't need to worry that that's going to drop down and snag. When it's in the current it's just basically going to hold its position there and it's just going to be working erratically through the current. 
obviously you don't want to just stop and let it drop right down if there is no current so eventually it's going to hit the bottom and you're going to risk getting snagged so really you've just got to feel the current and just work the lure accordingly but it's always a good idea um, when you go out to sort of test it in some calmer water where you can see the lure clearly um, practice say in a rock pool or, or a little bit of flat water where you can see what you need to do to get what action on it that's always always a good indication of what you need to do uh, once it's out there a long way you can't really see what's happening so work it in close and test out some of the different techniques basically it's a very easy lure to use I've had my eight-year-old and ten-year-old using the lure and had no problem in working it and getting a really good action out of it my older boy he's been using it for a few times fishing and he's been catching mackerel on it and um, some other fish so yeah it's a really easy easy lure to use and great to experiment with yeah but basically all these methods are going to be sending out distress signals to any fish you know passing by that it's an injured fish it's in distress um, it looks like an easy meal and that is um, probably one of the best methods you can do when you're fishing is, is sending out those distress signals okay finally a very important point about uh, working the lures is the rod you're using now people like rods of various lengths to use a lot of fishermen fish between I suppose uh, seven and a half eight to probably maximum nine foot often lure fishing I prefer to fish with longer rods for various reasons like reach and, and casting ability and also being able to work the lures around rocks also being able to play the fish around rocks with better reach those are important things to me but with regards to actually working the lure I would say the most important aspect is the rod stiffness um, I find it's very important to have a fairly stiff rod tip so that when you're putting action into that lure when you're basically working the lures it's going to go right into the lure and not into the rod tip so if you've got um, a very flexible rod tip a very soft rod tip you can lose a lot of the action into the rod which really doesn't work well with the lure so if you're looking to work the lure easily stiffer rod tip is going to be a lot easier and more effective in putting an action into the lure